brain is just incredibly busy. It's a it's a Ferrari engine for a brain with with bicycle brakes. So you've got this runaway brain, this brain that is con, con constantly coming up with new ideas, thoughts, feelings, impulses, plans, uh, um, resources, uh, hopes, uh, fears. It's just the brain is way more active than the average brain. And, um, and the, the challenge is, is to control all that activity. And if you can't, then, it's, then you, you know, you're not achieving your goals. You're underachieving, which is the big problem in the world of ADD. Two, one, zero, three, Hello and welcome to Stellar Life Podcast. This is your host, Orion. Today we're going to talk about ADHD and how it can become your superpower. Edward Hallowell, MD, is a board-certified child and adult psychiatrist and a world authority on ADHD. He is a graduate of Harvard College and Tulane Medical School and was a Harvard Medical School faculty member for 21 years. He is the founder of the Hallowell ADHD Centers in Boston, Metro West, New York City, San Francisco, Palo Alto, and Seattle. He has spent the past four decades helping thousands of adults and children live happy and productive lives through his strength-based approach to neurodiversity and has ADHD and dyslexia himself. Dr. Hallowell is a New York Times best-selling author and has written 20 books on multiple psychological topics. Dr. Hollowell has been featured on 2020, 60 Minutes, Opera, PBS, CNN, and today's show, Good Morning America, and more. And in this show, I have discovered that I might have ADHD myself. Um, and even if I do, and even if I don't, at the end of the day, words are words. We all have different functioning brains we all have different brain capacities. We all have different talents. Some have more focus in on one area and some have different focus in another area. And at the end of the day, the words that you're telling yourself are so important. Because regardless of whatever diagnose, diagnosis there is, you are whole and complete. And I firmly believe that through meditation and through connection to source, and if you need different supplements or, or light medication to help you focus, that's, that's, that's all good. And at the end of the day, everything that you need is within you now and you have the power to succeed and thrive whether you have or don't have a diagnosis the word that the words that really matter is are the words that you are telling yourself about how capable you are of achieving things and wh whatever you have we all have different gifts that god gave us and you have a tremendous gift find it unwrap it cherish it and do whatever you can to fulfill your destiny and now, without further ado, on to the show. Hi, Ned, and welcome to Stellar Life Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I'm, I'm super, super happy about this podcast. Um, when I was researching you, I was uh, so pleased with, with the topic that you are talking about, and uh, I think... I think most of us have some form of ADHD, right? Yeah, unless we're comatose. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, I feel like I, I always forget my keys, forget my stuff, and kind of like disorganizing in a way. Um, and so this is fascinating, uh, and I'm super happy that you're here. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Can you please share our, your origin story of how did you become the person that you are today? Ha! Huh. Well, that's a long story. <laughs> it's a little shorter. <laughs> My childhood was pretty chaotic. It was it was uh, 
lots of interesting people, but uh, many of them were drunk or crazy or both. So I, I had a, a, you know, very, like I said, chaotic uh, upbringing. My, I was conceived when my father was on leave from a, a mental hospital. Uh, he had just come back from the war where he was a war hero fighting uh, German submarines in, in World War II. Um, and my two older brothers had been born before the war. And then he came home and went crazy. And uh, uh, the, the hospital said, you can go home for a trial visit. So he got home and he was still crazy. And he, he decided he wanted to murder my mother because he thought she was a Nazi spy. So, so she, artful woman that she was, talked him into making love instead. And that's where I came from. So it's an interesting, interesting beginning for a psychiatrist. And, and then I, uh, uh, she went on to divorce him and marry a very uh, abusive alcoholic uh, man. And I battled with him as a little boy and, until they sent me away to a boarding school at the age of 10. Uh, so I, I basically grew up in, in institutions. And um, it was a wonderful thing that they did send me away because I would have been destroyed otherwise, um, and and uh, spiritually, you know, emotionally. But I went to uh, wonderful schools, a, a prep school called Exeter up in New Hampshire, and, and then Harvard College, and and um, uh, went on to medical school, and and then back to Harvard for training in psychiatry. And then I began my career as a writer. So I've, I've done both, uh, uh, you know, my books have sold over 2 million copies and, and, and I'm still active in practice. Um, the most important thing I did was marry my wife of 34 years, Sue. And then we proceeded to have three children who are now 33, 30 and 27, uh, two boys and a girl. And, um, uh, you know, I, I basically have achieved my goal in life, which was to uh, create the happy family I didn't have growing up. And largely because of, largely because of my wife, I've been able to do that. And, and uh, along the way, my, my two so-called learning disabilities got diagnosed after I'd finished all my training. Um, I discovered that I had both dyslexia and what's called ADHD. But I also realized that there's a positive side to them, and that that's sort of what I've built my career on is showing that the, you know these these conditions are not only uh, impairing that they confer major benefits, and if you manage them right, they're like superpowers. So I wouldn't trade my ADD or my dyslexia for all the world, and and if you look at uh, highly creative people and and highly uh, successful entrepreneurs, you'll find that an awful lot of them, if not most of them, have these traits. I think of them as traits, not disabilities, because they can be so positive. And words are so powerful. Oh, yes, absolutely. If you tell someone they have a deficit disorder, you, you sort of create the disorder. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, on the other hand, if you, if you say to someone you've got a special gift, you, you, you sort of create that, too. So it's a powerful reframing to say, uh, which I do say, I don't treat disabilities. I help people unwrap their gifts. Beautiful. And, and that's, what, that's what my career has been about. Nice. What's happening in the brain of somebody with ADHD compared to a, a brain of somebody that, well, like I said, we all have some of it. Well, compared to the brain of somebody who's... Um, it doesn't have as much of it. Yeah, let me just comment on that. We all have some of it because some people dismiss the diagnosis. They say that's everybody's like that, and and that's not true. Um, a good analogy is is depression. It, everybody has been sad, but not everyone has been depressed. And the difference is the intensity and the duration of the sadness. If you are intensely sad for a long time, that's called depression. Uh, if it's passing sadness, we just call that sad. And so it is with the symptoms of ADD. If, if you are intensely struggling with executive function, punctuality, organizing, that sort of thing, uh, and if you're, if you're intensely struggling to uh, 
achieve your goals and, and deliver on your promise. But at the same time, you are spectacularly creative, original, uh, visionary. That's ADD. Um, the other is simply, you know, a case of modern life. The point is that there is a difference, and, and some people dismiss the diagnosis. And it, I love the Edmund Burke years ago said, uh, although there be not a clear line that divides night from day, no one would disagree there is a difference. Well, in this, in this day and age, I mean, we probably get, we'll get to that point where night and day are, are debatable. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. But I get what you're saying. Um, I don't mean any disrespect to, to people who, who have it severely. I think just because I probably have it uh, mildly myself, I, I assume the rest of the world does. Uh, but it was also shown in research that uh, because of our devices and the, the quick cuts in movies and all that, our brain starts to be a little bit all over the place, right? Yeah, and that doesn't mean that... Uh this condition is created by electronic devices because if you if you take the electronic devices away do what i call the vermont test and put someone on a farm in vermont the add disappears uh, uh, on the other hand if if uh, if if they had the true condition and you put them on that farm in vermont pretty soon they turn that farm into an amusement park so so you know, one is created by the environment, the other is inborn genetic. Right. And and what does it look like for someone in with, with ADD? What, what life looks like? Well, the, the brain is just incredibly busy. It's a it's a Ferrari engine for a brain with, with bicycle brakes. So you've got this runaway brain, this brain that is con, con constantly coming up with new ideas, thoughts, feelings, impulses, plans, uh, um, resources, uh, hopes, uh, fears. It's just the brain is way more active than the average brain. And, um, and the, the challenge is, is to control all that activity. And if you can't, then, it's, then you, you know, you, you're not achieving your goals, you're underachieving, which is the big problem in the world of ADD. But once you, once you learn how to channel it, then you win the Nobel Prize, like the man who invented the polymerase chain reaction, the PCP test we use for COVID, had big time ADD, and he won the Nobel Prize in chemistry for that. Um, another analogy I use, imagine Niagara Falls. Uh, just, it, it's, it's just a lot of, of noise and mist, a torrent of, 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 of noise and mist, until you build a hydroelectric plant. So imagine, imagine that Niagara Falls is the ADD, and the hydroelectric plant is, is sort of the treatment, if you will. Once you take Niagara Falls and hit, hook it up to a hydroelectric plant, you light up the state of New York. But without the hydroelectric plant, it's just a lot of noise and mist. And beauty. Oh, yes, absolutely. It, it's, a, it's a beautiful chaos, um, our, our minds, and until we find a way of channeling all that energy and and uh, turning it into something useful. And that's the challenge. That's what I do for a living. So you debunked one uh, misconception about ADD that it's very, very different uh, between uh, an everyday induced ADD to something somebody was born with it and it can go away with change of the external environment. Uh, what are other... Uh, myth or like ideas that people have about ADD that you would like to debunk right now? Oh, there are so many uh, that it's just something that little boys have. Uh, little girls have it too. Little, it's just that little girls are not, tend not to be hyperactive, so they get overlooked. They're the quiet daydreamer. But their brain is just as active. It's moving. It's just as much a runaway brain. It's just not disruptive. And so the little girls don't get diagnosed. And the, the biggest undiagnosed group of all are adult, adult women. If they go for help, almost always they'll get diagnosed with depression or anxiety. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm just impressed with what you just said. Yeah, well, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a sad fact that the women who have ADD, they go for help. And they, yes, they show anxiety and depression. But what's driving it is the untreated ADD. They're anxious because they know they're making mistakes right and left, and so they're on guard, how am I going to screw up next? And they're depressed because they know they're underachieving. They know they could do better, and they don't know why they're not. 
So, so what you see is depression and anxiety, but that's not what needs treatment. What needs treatment is the underlying cause, which is the unrecognized ADD. But 99 times out of 100, what they get is a diagnosis of, of depression and anxiety, and they, give, they get given an SSRI, an antidepressant, which is not at all what they need. What they need if, in terms of medication is stimulant medication to help them focus. And then when they, can, when they focus, they're more in control, so their anxiety goes down, and they achieve at a higher level, so their so-called depression goes away. Wow, that's something I've, I never knew. That's incredible. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. And, and particularly for women, uh, it's, it's just a shame how they, they just they don't get diagnosed. And so they don't get the help they need most of the time. Yeah. Anything else that, that people would think about ADD that is? Well, another big one is that people with ADD are stupid. And, and you know, it's the opposite is true. We're, we are the creative geniuses. We may not be able to make use of our brilliance. And that's a, that's a big problem, and that's you know that's my line of work, is helping people make use of it. But uh, the general public, a lot of them think, well, if you're ADD, you're unreliable, you're you're uh, irresponsible, you're lazy. You're, I mean, all these what I call moral diagnoses, all these these uh, terms of opprobrium, you know, and 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 that's you know it, it's really unfair, wrong, inaccurate, and damaging. Yes. Do you think ADD is overdiagnosed or or underdiagnosed? No, no, that's another that's another these armchair experts who have no clue what they're talking about. They're, oh, it's overdiagnosed. Well, it it's it's not. I mean, sure there are pockets of the country where it is, but that's if you look at the numbers, uh, uh, it doesn't bear out, you know, over the large sample. Uh, and as I say in in adult women for example, it's vastly underdiagnosed. In adults in general, including men, it's still underdiagnosed. The adult uh, ADD is uh, the biggest undi undiagnosed population. And, and the reason it matters is this is high stakes. If untreated ADD is, is really bad thing to have. I mean, uh, the prison population is full of people, adults with untreated ADD. The, the addicted population, the unemployed population, the suicidal, the marginalized, the 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 uh, the people who just can't do anything in their life, um, uh, you know, th that way overrepresented is ADD. So, uh, so, and and what's particularly tragic about it is, with the right help, these people could be our greatest contributors. You know, so they could go from being down and out, out of luck, you know, just barely getting by to winning a Nobel Prize, you know. And so so it really matters to get the right diagnosis and get the right treatment. And, and you know, another myth is that uh, these medications that we use are so dangerous. They're not. If you If you abuse them, they're dangerous, sure. But so is... Pretty much anything. I mean, if, if you abuse water, you know, you can drown in it. So, you know, they're, they're, they're any, any substance of any kind can be misused. Uh, but the, the meds we use for ADD, when they're used properly, are a godsend. They're wonderfully effective. They, they really, they work like eyeglasses do. They, they, they allow you to, to focus instead of bumping into things because you can't see straight. At the car accidents, <laughs> people with untreated ADD have like eight times more common car accidents, you know, and, and then when they get treated, the car accidents go way down. Wow. What do you think about uh, psilocybin or um, there are a lot of uh, new supplements on the, mar on the market like uh, lion's mane and, and other uh, mushrooms that are supposed to really help build a brain, build the neurons, help focus. What do you think about those? I love it, but it's it's open season. We we don't really know. We don't have the research studies that we need. We we need them. But I you know, I I uh my philosophy with my patients and with myself is whatever helps, use it as long as it's safe and it's legal. You know, psilocybin is illegal in some states, legal in others, but it's clear that it, it's used properly. It's it's a wonderful antidepressant. It's amazing. You know, my friend my friend is using it to help his mom with dementia, 
along alongside with other mushrooms and some some supplements and she went from not being able to talk to like being in the moment communicating and it's like it does and that's what's so cool about this whole field you know of, of natural remedies of herbs supplements you know things that we used to dismiss as being uh, so dangerous and hallucinogenic and so on and so forth that if you if you take away the stigma like you said it's, it's how you use it yeah exactly absolutely absolutely and that they they hold tremendous promise for being able to help conditions that we thought of as being unhelpable like like dementia for example uh, but you know you have to you have to be careful because you, you don't want to you know we're walking into uncharted territory so you you want to be careful that you're not going to damage yourself you know and and uh, or break a law you know. uncharted territory excites me Yes, yes. <laughs> but you see, but that's see, that's where nobody that's probably, ever has gone before. Dun, dun, dun. But see, that's because you're by nature a pioneer. Other people would get terrified. Uncharted territory. I don't want to go there. Whereas you say, "Let me at it." You know, I, 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 that's where I want to go. You know, so that you you self-select as as a as a pioneer, an explorer, a brave woman. You know, and and. Uh, 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 as opposed to the timid soul who, you know, hears uncharted territory and they run for cover. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, as as a parent of of, of a young child, um, how, how do how do parents, educators, how do we uh, treat it or or, or approach it? Uh, just just you know the way you'd raise any child, with love, with direction, with guidance. Uh, with these kids, you, you don't force them to be someone they're not. Uh, follow their curiosity. They'll take a more twisty, turny kind of course. They're not going to be the straight, go to law school and become a lawyer kind of career. They're going to go off on tangents. They're going to twist and turn their way. They're going to do wonderfully interesting things, but it won't be a straight line. And so what you want to do is be there to offer the support. Ride the wave. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, another analogy I use is ride the bucking bronco. You know, I mean, you know, it, it's uh, uh, there'll be a lot of tumbles and spills, but in in the long run, these are the people who are going to change the world. Uh, and and so, you know, try not to force them into a sort of conformist model. We we are not conformists. That's true advice for any child. Of any nature. Absolutely. No, what what works for it's it's not some special way of raising ADD. It's what every child should get. It's just the ADD people really need it because unfortunately society tends to come down on them as if they should be punished into being like everybody else. And and the, these are the battered children throughout history. These are the these are the kids who used to get beaten all the time. Um, have you ever heard of Captain Underpants? No. Okay, it's it's the if you were the parent of a boy, you, you would have. It, it's the best-selling children's story, uh, written by a man by the name of Dave Pilkey, and it sold uh, like a hundred hundred million copies. What? And yeah, oh, it's. I think uh, it's I'm, cultural. It's just that I wasn't born here, so I think this is why. I'm, oh, I'm okay. Well, yeah, yeah. if you uh, every American boy has read uh, Captain Underpants, and then Dog Man was the successor. Anyway. When that man was in school, he went to Lutheran school in the Midwest, and his great talent was making people laugh. Well, the teachers didn't like that. So he would get paddled regularly in school. He'd have to stand up, bend over, and be hit with this board right all the way through school, not just as a little boy, but in eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, he would, he would get paddled regularly, uh, physically abused, and... and um, I've become friends with him because he has ADD and dyslexia like me. And, and I said, Dave, are you bitter? But he said, no, I'm not bitter. They, they thought they were doing what they were supposed to do. And, and uh, uh, he said, but I, I, I guess I've had the last laugh because right. <laughs> he's, he's become, you know, the best. a benefactor of humankind. And they're, you know, still there. That nobody know who they are and exactly. will never know who they are. Exactly. Ever. Exactly. Exactly. So somebody who's, um, who's experienced this uh, Niagara Falls symptom of ADD and wants to channel it and, and, and 
turn it into fortune and, and, and power, how do, how do one do it? Like, what are the strategies? Well, find, find what you like. Um, and if you're a parent, you know, just continuously follow your child's curiosity. And whatever they find that they like, try to give them structure and encouragement and keep them at it. And, uh, you know, and, and that's really what it's about, the combination of, of uh, finding something you like to do that you're good at and then persisting and practicing. And, and as you do that, you'll develop confidence and self-esteem. And those are factors that really predict uh, le leading a wonderful life. It's not that complicated I I as long as you don't get led astray into forcing your child to be someone that he or she's not meant to be. And if you have a girl that you, you don't overlook the fact that she also could have could have ADD, you know, that you don't have to be disruptive to have the condition. Um, you know, the, the basics of parenting are the same regardless. It, it's love, support, protection, uh, some kind of structure uh, with authority. The, you know, these kids need to be, they need to be kept from doing things that are dangerous. And they need to be, they need to be told no uh, from time to time. Right. But for adults, for adults who want to really succeed in life and are struggling. Same thing. Is it just doing, doing, taking medications or are there any? Well, medication can help, but it, the main thing is to find, find something that you like to do that you're good at and then, and then do it. You know, it, it, the two keys, marry the right person or live with the right person and, or sleep with the right person and find the right job. Uh, those are the two keys. And uh, if you do that, like, for example, I think you've done, uh, the rest sort of takes care of itself. You know, it, it, it's uh, your, your, your passion gets channeled uh, both toward building a career and building a family and, and building a support network. Yes, yes, I still have my own struggles, though. But it was it was a, a, a big deal for me to, to hear what you said about the difference between the genders because... As a child, I would daydream for a day. Like I would daydream and imagine and and build worlds. And... That's the girl. That's the female ADD. You'd get lost in your imagination. You and you you wouldn't you wouldn't be hyperactive at all. You you would be the little girl sitting in the back of the in the back row looking out the window. Yeah, I think I was a bit of both. What advice can you give to somebody who was recently diagnosed with ADD and is freaking out right now? Well, read my book is the is the is the easiest thing to do. Which my one? Which book. one? Where, where to well, start? I, I've written twenty three books. I know. Like, most, where do we begin? The, the most recent is ADHD two point oh, and it it came out last year, and it's it's only a hundred pages. I finally understood my audience. It's very short. And uh, but it has everything you need in it. And, you know, in terms of bang for your buck, the book costs maybe, you know, ten dollars and, and you, you've got everything you need in it. And then then you get the right help. And if you need medication, you see an MD. If you need a coach, you, you go online and find a coach. Uh, if, as far as find the right job and marry the right person, you, you've got to guide yourself. But the, don't make the mistake in, in finding a mate. People with ADD tend to fall for train wrecks. And that's because we love high stimulation. So train wrecks are highly stimulating and we're born rescuers. So we want to save these people. So you put those two together, the stimulation and the desire to save, and it's usually not a good. So try to find someone who's exciting, but not a train wreck. And then, and then try to find a job where it's the combination of it's in your wheelhouse. You have an aptitude, but it's also challenging. If it's not challenging, you'll get bored with it. So you put the two together, you have an aptitude, and it's challenging. We're incredibly hard workers once we're interested. So, so, so find someone you love who loves you back and find a job you love that you can do that's challenging. And you're off to the races. And you will outstrip everybody else. Like you're doing. You're, I mean, you're a great example. You, you've taken on a, a, a difficult uh, task that you're cobbling together while you're raising a child, you know, while you're carrying on a relationship, you're outside the box, you're growing, you're, you're, you're feeling your way along, but you're pulling it off, you're succeeding. And it, it's wonderful to see. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have you every week talking to me like that? <laughs>
<laughs> but it's, I'm just telling you, it's obvious, you know, it's right there for the world to see. Thank you so much. Um, what advice would you give your young self? Younger self? Oh, uh, don't worry so much. I, I grew up worrying, probably because of the chaos that I grew up in, but I grew up worrying all the time. Would I, would, would everything collapse? Would I, you know, would I survive? You know, would anyone ever want me? You know, I, I was terribly insecure and terribly, uh, but I, I just kept going ahead. I didn't let fear hold me back. I think that's another thing, and I'm glad I didn't. A lot of people let fear hold them back. I, I was full of fear, but I didn't let it hold me back. I just plunged right ahead anyway, you know, and, and um, you know, and, and, and thank God, you know, uh, it worked out. I, I certainly made plenty of mistakes, and I, and I certainly suffered plenty of consequences, but uh, I got more success than failure, and... and uh, you know, so I, I guess trust the process would be advice. Trust that if you're if you're if you're putting your best self forward, if you if you have goodness in your heart and you're you're trying your best, it, it, it'll work out one way or another. You try to befriend good people, try not to hook up with you know bad people. And and I've believe me, I've hooked up with bad people. I just didn't see how bad they were. And so I've been betrayed. I've been sued. I've been uh, I've been accused, falsely accused, I've, you know, all those kind of things that's happened to me. But thank goodness, there's been always a way to redeem it and, and turn it around and, and, and have good stuff follow. What's the connection between ADD and empathy? Well, we are extraordinarily sensitive. So when we're engaged, we're very empathic. But when we're not, we can seem heartless and clueless and, and totally unempathic. We can just like be just be completely missing the boat. Uh, but but it's not because we're, you know, heartless. We just don't uh, if, if we're not if we're not cued in, uh, we just don't see what's going on. So it, for, for somebody who's very empathic, is there a way to because you're very empathic? How did you? Um, that's why I guess you you got involved with the wrong crowd um, and didn't see it. So what did you do to have like boundaries or shields? I, I think it's the, the, the positive sign of being hurt is if it doesn't kill you or make you bitter, it deepens you and you become more empathic. So I think that's what happened to me, the, that instead of being instead of being turned into a bitter, you know, angry man, I became a very loving, vulnerable man. And, and you know, and, and grace of God, I, I don't know why, but it, it was, uh, I could have been, I could have turned into a miserable person. Uh, but instead, I, I just feel the wellspring of, of love bubbling up inside of me and playfulness and mischief, you know, and, and you know, fun uh, bubbling up inside of me all the time, you know, except when I'm feeling bleak and dark and down, which happens too. Mm. Well, thank you for being so kind and generous and vulnerable and it, it's just a pleasure talking to you i wish we had more time uh i know your i know your time is very precious um i have so many more questions uh but maybe for for another interview sometime it, it, invite me back again i'd love to come yeah thank you so much um really appreciate you and thank you listeners remember to trust the process put your best self forward befriend good people and have a stellar life. This is Orion. Till next time.